Dudes and dudettes, how are you guys? This is Chazzy and welcome back to What's the Damage, the good old WTD question mark on my channel, the classic segment here where I talk about things that I usually don't like and I disagree with and this and that, you know, you guys already know how it works at this point, you know, get, you know, tackling topics and heated rants and stuff and today I'm going to be talking about something that I think is actually very relevant right now in the world, you know, something that I think is still red hot on trending topics on Twitter and other internet forums and stuff, you know. I'm going to be talking about the streaming service Netflix and not really as much the platform itself as how it's been going downhill lately, you know, and I'm pretty sure you guys know what's been going on lately, you know, uh, with the whole Netflix trying to raise up prices to bring more consumers and or rather keep their current consumers, you know, and they are facing a lot of competition, you know, and there are a lot of things to unpack in this video and I'm going to be trying to give them to you in a detailed manner in chronological order. This is not a deep dive video into the history of Netflix, by the way, so don't expect too much in that department there. It's just going to be me giving you guys a little bit of their backstory, you know, and telling you how they got to where they are now and why they are, in my opinion, starting to dig their own grave, okay? Now, here's the thing, guys. I'm pretty sure you know what Netflix is, uh, unless you live under a huge you know, heavy ass rock that crushes you and keeps you from hearing the uh, news from in the world. You know, it's impossible for you to not know what Netflix is, okay? And the thing is that uh, a lot of people think that it's recent, you know, that it was something that happened just a few years ago, like maybe a decade or so, but it was actually founded in 1997, you know, it's a very old company. And originally they were, they were actually a DVD rental service where you can actually uh, order DVDs online through the World Wide Web and actually they would be delivered to your house, you know, and you could watch them there, then return them, you know, uh, very similar to Blockbuster Video, you know, and there's actually a popular urban myth that uh, Netflix killed Blockbuster Video, but that's actually a common misconception because coincidentally, Blockbuster was already going under, you know, because of uh, their, their, uh, their loan debts and internal disagreements and uh, you know just problems inside you know that were starting to just uh, destroy them from the inside out so Netflix had nothing to do with it by coincidence it started to get popular around the time that Blockbuster video you know plummeted so uh, in 1998 uh, Netflix already had about 30 employees and they had a catalog of like 925 DVDs so that was pretty much the entire catalog of DVDs available to rent at the time you know and of course as the years went by they started to grow more and more you know they, they were this primarily DVD rental service long distance, you know, but then, you know, fast forward like a decade or so, you know, in like 2006, seven, eight ish, you know, that's when they made the transition into uh, the digital uh, streaming platform, you know, and uh, in the early days of Netflix, there were very few things to watch, you know, it was very possible to binge the entirety of their catalog. And uh, I, I actually left the United States in 2009, right around when Netflix was really truly taking off, you know. But of course, years later, I would hop on the trend here in Brazil. You know, I still use Netflix today, uh, but it might come to an end soon. I'm going to get to that later. So the thing is that uh, uh, all these years later, Netflix has become this giant company, you know, that has more than 12,000 employees, you know, to their name. And they have over 220 million subscribers, you know, which is really freaking crazy. And they make billions and billions of cash, you know. And for many years, Netflix was the, 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 the reverence, the reference that we had for streaming services, you know. They were the giant, undisputed. They were up there. They had everything. They had every TV show, every movie, you know, everything from Marvel and War or HBO, you know, they had friends, they had How I Met Your Mother, they had so many amazing things to watch, you know, but, 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 the years following that, the companies that represented the, the companies that were, you know, that had the distribution rights to some of these movies, you know, like, a, you know, Sony or Apple or Microsoft, HBO, you know, these companies, they started to, and especially Disney, they started to look at Netflix and saw how much money it was taking, it was uh, bringing in, and they were like, you know what? I think I want a slice of that pie. All of a sudden, these other companies who were allowing Netflix to use and distribute and stream and make money off of their own content were making their own platforms now to stream their own stuff, you know? It was gradual at first, but steadily they started to branch out more and more. And now we have things like, for example, Disney Plus. And uh, in case you guys don't know, Disney bought pretty much everything, you know? They, they own Marvel now, they own Star Wars, you know, and they have their own original movies, their content, you know? So Disney Plus itself is a huge, vast library of content 
content, you know, especially if you're a fan of Disney like I am myself, you know. And uh, so then there was also this thing called uh, HBO Max, which is all of the HBO programming. So that's where you can watch Harry Potter and uh, Friends, you know. And because I do believe HBO is the same as Warner Bros. They have the same uh, uh, content there. I don't think Warner Bros. has their own platform. Call me on this if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is right now. Then we have other things like uh, Amazon Prime, but that's that's always been sort of like parallel to Netflix. You know, they have their own thing there. What else do we have? Uh, there's Paramount Plus now because they're getting a lot of hype because they're, they're streaming the new Halo series, you know? So uh, pretty much everything that Netflix once owned, that not, they have only their own original content now, which does sometimes suck, but unfortunately their original content is not enough to, uh, to save them, you know? It's not enough to give their platform such a huge uh, following right now. And the thing is that right now the streaming market is very oversaturated because all of these things that I'm talking about has led to something that I call the great streaming war, which I have addressed on this channel before, but a long time ago. So I might actually do that video again, give you guys even more detailed info, you know, might even be one of my next ones. So uh, watch out for that. And uh, it's like Netflix now is it, it, backed up against the wall, you know, because they've been losing a lot of subscribers because their original content just isn't really up to scratch. You know, the only thing that there is, that you can look forward to watch on Netflix right now is the new season of Stranger Things, you know? Beyond that, at least in my personal opinion, you know, there's nothing much. There's not a lot of hype, you know? Their library now is vast and there are a lot of things to watch. I personally would continue to keep uh, using Netflix for a long time if their prices didn't get so ridiculously high right now, you know, especially here in Brazil, but I'm gonna get to money in a bit. So, there are other streaming platforms that offer you uh, hype for their content. Like they will release uh, episodes of a series, you know, like, a, I don't know, maybe one a week or two per week. You know, they're actually going to make you watch them and, and build up the hype to watch the next one. Just like back when we had cable TV or rather not cable, right? Uh, subscription services, you know, uh, yeah, I think it was cable TV where, for example, if you wanted to watch The Walking Dead, you would have to go on AMC and wait for a new episode every Sunday. You know, that's how it is. That's what other streaming platforms do. Netflix offers everything right out the gate. When they release a new TV show, they release the entire season so you can binge it in one sitting, you know? Uh, Matt Pat over on Film Theory did a really great video talking about this recently, which I think is actually going to really help you guys understand more about this topic, you know? And uh, the video that I'm doing now, uh, he expands on this topic tenfold. So I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with Netflix doing it this way, giving us everything to watch right out the gate. But understandably, it doesn't create as much hype as, it, as you would for something else actually waiting to release you know me personally I don't mind getting a full season and wait, waiting for the second one to release because it actually does make a lot of hype for me you know but that's just me personally however the main crust of this video is what I'm going to get into now which is of course it always comes back to this the money now, the last time that it was calculated, you know, back uh, last year in 2021, Netflix had a total revenue of $29.7 billion. That is a lot of money for just a little stream platform that they operate, you know? But the thing is that because of what's been happening lately, because they have been losing subscribers to their competition, they felt the need to evolve and do something a little different, you know, to mix up their formula. Now, of course, you could try to make better original content for your platform. That will definitely bring in more people, right? But they were just like, nah, nah, let's not do that. It's going to take too long, too much work. Or you could try to maybe, maybe uh, strike a deal with other streaming platforms and see if maybe just maybe you can get some of their content back to yours, even if it's for a limited time, you know, just to bring in some more audiences. And then they were like, nah, that's probably going to take too much work. And we're going to have to spend money because, you know, they already belong to other people and we know how that is, you know? So some some very brilliant bastard in the board meeting to decide this stood up and said, you know what, let's just raise the prices and do nothing else. And this man was promoted to CEO. <laughs> because that's exactly what they did. They took everything that they had now, and they raised the prices ever so elegantly, you know, enough to be noticeable. And they also are going to crack down on account sharing. What is account sharing on streaming services? It's basically when one person allows somebody else, like a family member or a friend to use their account for free, you know, not pay them, you know? So basically Netflix does lose money on this because that person who is uh, borrowing the account is not paying, but it's normal, dude. Everybody does this on every single streaming uh, service, you know? And there's never, 
any way to track it because I mean you could just say there's a there's a this thing now where you can just uh, confirm that it's you logging into a screen if you go somewhere outside of your house and you just confirm and it's everything is okay you know and people do this a lot you know they 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 are allowed to use their peers accounts and they just the the person who pays just confirms that it's them on their phone and it's all good you know but Netflix is going to start charging even for this you know whether or not you can actually verify that it's you I believe that if you access your account outside of your house or somebody else does you will have to pay an additional fee on top of that you know like the person who is using your account is sharing the the, the monthly debt with you you know there's nothing wrong with this if you had started out that way but given how long Netflix has been in the market operating, them coming out with this idea all of a sudden now is definitely gonna hurt their subscriber count. I think that uh, recently, in just a matter of one week, they lost like 200,000 subscribers, you know? Which might not seem like a lot considering they have over 200 mil uh, million, but think of it this way. What if this is monthly? You know, well, what if every week, every month they lose 200,000? They're losing 800,000 every month, right? So very, very quick. Uh, it's not gonna be quick because they do have a lot of subscribers, but if you lose 800,000, close to 1 million subs every month, in one year, it is gonna hurt you because you're gonna be losing in the ballpark of 12 million per year, you know? And I have a lot of friends who still use Netflix and they are telling me that they're gonna quit. I don't think there's one friend who I have that's going to continue to use Netflix after after uh, Stranger Things 4 comes out or Cobra Kai later in the year, you know? So it's crazy, man, it's crazy. Me, myself, again, I would continue if their prices weren't going up because there are things I still wanna watch. I love K-dramas and Asian TV shows and movies, you know? And they're, they have a lot of them on Netflix that I would love to get to at one point, but I can't because now we're going to talk about the pricing. Right now in the United States, there are three uh, different plans for Netflix. There's the basic, the standard, and the premium, okay? The basic one costs $9.99 and you get just one screen to share. You can just watch it on one device at, the, at one time, you know? And you can only stream at, a, at 480p quality. So very, very low quality. If I had that on my TV, I would be like, I don't know, trying to drive a Ferrari through a forest, you know? It really, really freaking sucks. And it's just ridiculous, you know? You can only download uh, uh, things to watch offline on one device you know it's really dumb and uh that's pretty much all it is right there's no hd then there's the standard which is 1549 and here you can stream up to two screens at the same time you know and you do have slightly better uh video quality now you can watch stuff on 1080p quality which is you know uh, it's slightly better but it's not like it's still not like you know, it's not the best, you know, you really want to watch something in better quality than that, like actual 4K, but you can't, you know, And but at the very least, you can now download things to watch offline on two different devices, you know, so I guess there's that that has that going for it. Then there's the premium, which is $19.99, and this is the one that is uh, the most popular one because usually it's a family plan. You can divide it with people because you can watch stuff on four different screens at the same time, you know, and also download things to watch offline on four different devices, you know, uh, uh, and also now is when you have access to the 4K HD, Ultra HD resolution, right? So and just reviewing, okay? You have one plan that sucks. It's you watching stuff that's in 480, 480p. Then you have the standard, which is you watching stuff in 1080p, you know, 1080. Uh, I actually do believe it's either 1080p or 1080i. Yeah, it's 1080p. So then you eventually have the premium, which is the one that a lot of people still use that you can have uh, stuff in 4K uh, HD. I cannot have anything under that because my TV is 4K, so I need to watch something on a much bigger screen. However, I currently don't live in the United States. Do I? I live in Brazil. And those same exact plans that I just told you guys, you know, we do have the basic, the standard, and the premium, the same exact things that I told you, the same exact requirements. However, here the basic costs $25.90 in Brazilian reais, right? So that 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 is already more expensive than the premium one in the U.S. You know, if you're just gonna convert them regularly, uh, brutally, then the standard, uh, the same exact plan is $39.90. Okay, so as you guys can see, we're starting to hit a bit of a, of, a, of a niche here. And then the premium, which is the one that I can use for 4K, is 5590. 
Even if you don't live here in Brazil, I don't have to tell you, I shouldn't have to tell you that that is incredibly expensive of a monthly fee just to watch something that, it, that comes out to be incredibly limited. I live by myself, you know? I have just one TV, you know? Yeah, I might watch stuff on my tablet sometimes or even my phone, but I, I don't need to be able to have the ability to watch on four different screens at once, man. That is ridiculous. That is just stupid, you know? It's way too expensive, man. And it, it might not be affecting people in, in the US, but here in Brazil, this is the main reason why so many of my friends are canceling their subscriptions, you know? Or, or intend to after they watch something that they're waiting for, like for example, uh, Stranger Things. And I really don't blame them, man, because this is way too much money. Now, as you guys can see, they are facing a bit of a conundrum here, you know, they are fa this is where Netflix is at a crossroads in their uh, history right now because there have been so many memes about the, the platform dying and being buried, you know, by other ways and that's actually not really far from the truth, man. If Netflix continues this way, just putting out the same original content and not trying anything new, not thinking outside the box and just raising their prices like a bunch of capitalist assholes, they will definitely go under. You know, they were the original, even the dog is protesting, you hear that? Even the dog doesn't like Netflix, you know? They were the original, they were the first, but they will, they might just be also the last. You know, they are dead last in the race right now, and like, if they start to lose enough subscribers, the business will definitely go under, you know? We're gonna have Netflix preserved in a museum of national streaming services, you know? It's just not gonna cut it anymore, you know? So, uh, the lighting really, pull the whoopee on me, huh? the lighting changed so much right now. So if this keeps happening, there will probably not be a streaming service there to enjoy anyway, you know? This is what I think about Netflix right now. And honestly, if it wasn't for the very simple fact that I really want to watch Stranger Things the next season and also the, the fifth season of Cobra Kai and a few other K-dramas, if it wasn't for that, I probably would have quit a long time ago, but I just want to try to maybe at least get through these next few months here, you know, but I will have to unfortunately get rid of it very, very soon because there's just no more way to around it, man. And uh, if you guys have Netflix, if you if you still are subscribed to it, you know, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are, if you plan on leaving Netflix or if you're still very loyal despite everything that's been going on, you know. Let me know because I am genuinely curious, you know, because this is a really good topic to debate, you know. This is a really good topic to talk about and I just want to hear what you guys have to say, okay. In my opinion though, Netflix is going under fast and well, if they don't do something, if they don't pull a rabbit out of their hat, they're going to go the way of the Titanic and just break apart and sink. All right, so that's it for today, guys, okay? Hopefully, you enjoyed this little dive about what's been going on lately. You know, I enjoy talking about it. Hopefully, the video comes out okay, and that's it. Got to go because my battery is low. <laughs> if you guys happen to enjoy this video, please go ahead and give it a like and also subscribe to my channel because I release videos every single day. And while you're at it, might as well hit the notification bell too to know exactly what time I upload, eh? And it's all good. Stay tuned because I will in the near future record that streaming war video thingy thing magic about. That's it, guys. This is Chazzy signing out for now. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Roll the outro screen. And please don't unsubscribe to me. Just Netflix.